Monster House for Game Boy Advance is a top-down view action-adventure game based on the movie of the same name released in 2006. Nintendo DS and GameCube versions were also released, but they're completely different games and they're not being discussed in this video. Here we are only looking at the Game Boy Advance version of Monster House. This game is a love letter to retro gaming as a sort of combination of The Legend of Zelda and Zombies Ate My Neighbors, with graphics resembling those of the 16-bit era. The monster house itself acts as one large dungeon, and your main weapon is a squirt gun. There is no overworld map, so all the action takes place inside of the house, with the safe point being the bathroom, where everyone can refill their water tanks and you're able to save your game progress. The Zelda similarities are in abundance in this game, from the holding up and throwing of pots, the finding items animation, the locked doors, the pulling of objects, the puzzles, the hidden areas, to the falling down of holes. It's all here. I don't see any issues with Monster House relying heavily on Zelda as some of my favorite games have done the same. Like Golden Axe Warrior, Crusader of Senti, Adventure Time, Hey Ice King, Why'd You Steal Our Garbage, and Secret of the Nameless Kingdom, Newtopia, Newtopia 2, and 3D.Game Heroes to name a few. In Monster House, there are three playable characters, Chowder, DJ, and Jenny. Chowder has the most health, does the most damage, can carry the most water for the gun, and when his gun is charged, it shoots a spread shot. Chowder is also the slowest of the three. DJ does not do as much damage, has less health, cannot carry as much water, but shoots and moves faster. Jenny shoots the fastest and the furthest, moves the fastest, but also has the least amount of health. All three characters have their own secondary item slot, squirk on water supply, and health meter. There are different items that you can find inside of the house. Some examples are candy, chocolate bars, and soda pop that fill your depleted health, a water droplet that will fill part of your squirt gun tank, and you can also find keys to open locked doors that will allow you to progress through the game. Along with the primary squirt gun, you can equip a secondary item, such as a flashlight, which illuminates darkened rooms, a flash cube, which momentarily stuns all enemies in a room, a walkie-talkie, which allows you to communicate with a character named Skull, who resides outside of the house and will give you game hints, and others. The controls are pretty standard here. The D-pad allows you to walk in the typical eight directions, including diagonals. Double tapping up, down, left, or right will cause your character to dash in that direction. Pressing the B button shoots the squirt gun, and holding the B button either charges or continuously shoots the squirt gun, depending on which character you are currently controlling. The A button utilizes a secondary item. If you hold the R button while shooting, your character will strafe. While not shooting, the R button will allow you to pick up objects and throw them at enemies, or just shatter them to get the items inside. The L button shuffles through the characters, the select button is for quick map access, and the start button brings you to the in-game menu. Critique. The dash is helpful and really speeds the game up, but it makes no sense that you can't dash in a diagonal direction when you're able to walk in one. I love that there are multiple characters with different abilities and attributes. The characters all have separate health bars, so switching between them is helpful when the character you're playing as is low on health. However, in order to switch, you have to be standing completely still. There are times when you desperately need to switch to another character but aren't able to stand still to do so, and you end up dying. Sometimes your character will actually get stuck in a part of the room that you shouldn't even get stuck on. If one character dies, it's game over for everyone. An additional fault is that no matter which character you're currently using, when a cutscene occurs, you're automatically defaulted back to using DJ. Some of the rooms are a little small, so sometimes multiple enemies will assault you simultaneously and it's nearly impossible to get away from them. The audio cues are a nice touch in this game. Making a noise when you're low on health or low on water is a very helpful reminder when playing. The accompanying music of the game fits the atmosphere very well. It's reminiscent of the 16-bit mini music which plays off of its old school graphical style. The soundtrack is creepier than you would expect from being based off of a kids movie.
Monster House for Game Boy Advance is currently very cheap. Right now it can be found online brand new for less than $9.